The United States Armed Forces Radio Service brings you a special program to celebrate the Feast of St. Patrick by presenting an utterly delightful story by Charles O'Neill called The Three Wishes of Jamie McRuin. And now, to tell you about the story and to introduce our players, here's Mr. James Hilton. Mr. O'Neill, as you might imagine, is of Irish descent. And his story, which won a coveted Christopher Award last year, has all the wayward charm of which Irish literature is so full. And which, by the way, you often find in Irish people too. When I told Mr. O'Neill how happy we were to dramatize his story on the air, he told me of plans afoot to produce it as a stage play on Broadway next season. So that gives our performance tonight the quality of a real first. And to make this a double first, our star is none other than Richard Todd, born in Ireland, who is winning high renown as an actor these days, and whose appearance here tonight is the first time he has acted in a radio drama in this country. And now we begin the first act of The Three Wishes of Jamie McRuin, starring Richard Todd. Once upon a time when cows were kind and eagles of the air built their nests in the beards of giants, a green-coated lad with a stick in his hand and a bundle of bannocks over his shoulder went out on the rocky roads of the world to push his fortune. Three times I saw Queen Una in my dreams. Three times I spoke to the fairy queen, Cousin Tavish. And was she very beautiful, Jamie? Aye, with a glowing golden beauty that could consume the heart of any man. And she granted me three wishes, as is the custom. You don't say so. Well, tell me, what did you ask for? First, I asked for travel. Enough to make a man homesick. Ah, that's a good wish, lad. Next, I asked for a woman of my choice. To be as beautiful as the fairy queen herself. To marry with. And the third wish? I asked for a wonderful son. One who'd have the gift of poetry and speak in the ancient tongue of Gaelic. And so Jamie McRuin, a lad of 24, who took to dreaming the way some other men take to drink, left his home in Ireland and came to America. And with him was cousin Owen Roe Tavish, a wonderful old man with the warmth and lilt of the true Irish heart. In Georgia, they came upon an encampment of Irish travelers, horse traders who lived in tents. It was here in the year 1895 that Jamie came upon the beautiful Maeve Harrigan. Not a month out of the old country and lost in the new one already I am. Indeed, no. Anna, don't go. I have a feeling if you walk out of me sight... Something will happen to the eyes of me, and they'll never be able to look at another girl again as long as I live. It isn't proper for traveller women to be speaking freely with outsiders and strangers. An outsider I may be, but no stranger. We two have met before. It is not possible. Where? Ah, no, not in the towns, nor along the red roads of Georgia, but in the early morning of time, when the world was just beginning. Please, I've got to go. Ah, let me go with oh. you. I'll guide you to the magic well with water of such marvellous sweetness. Tis whispered anyone drinking it falls in love with the first person they see. Why, oh, I'd better not. Well, uh, I'll teach you how to place your ear to the ground and hear the fairy music rising from hollow hills. No, not that either. Is everyone in Ireland as daft as you? Ah, everyone. But since we're all of us alike there, it's not so noticeable. <laughs> You laugh, but I tell you, there's a strange and wonderful power in that madness. I really must go. Ah, I can see it in your eyes. You're thinking mine is high talk for one with only the clothes on his back. But I'll tell you a secret. At home, I was known as one of the Flahulath ones. What does it mean, Flahulath? It means you belong to the hills and to the sea. That you can see with one eye into the future and with the other into the past that you've a power of kindling new fires under all forgotten dreams. You say we've never met before. What? I say we stood side by side in an ancient wood, while druids with beards like fire and voices that rang like bells joined our hands and led us through the elements of earth and air and fire and water. Jamie. Goodbye. Oh, Tavish. Did you see her? At a glance, lad. Oh, lovely as a portrait she is, Tavish. 
Her name's Maeve, like the ancient queen of the West. I think I'd like to marry her. You must speak to her father, Tavish. Oh, that I will, that I will. How is your morning's morning this morning, I'll say? I don't know you, but a young friend of mine who spilled his wits somewhere between here and Galway wishes to marry your daughter. I tell you, I've looked into her eyes, and to she I'll marry or no one. Pursuing me, Mr. McRuin. Didn't you know in your heart's heart I'd come to you, Maeve? We were destined for each other. It takes two to dream a dream like mine. But we've known each other less than an hour. How can you be so sure of yourself? As sure as a man who's looked into tomorrow. But you're making a fool of yourself. I've been promised for over a year to... Uh, Travis Bunn loves me. What do you think I do not? Promise for a year, say you. What's this prior claim to mine? that goes back to the beginning of time. You just must understand. Uh, I do. It was my doom you pronounced. Only you didn't add, may God have mercy on your soul. You said from this moment, Jamie McRuin, you're a dead man. You may walk and talk and breathe the air. You can smash your great fists into men's faces and feel their blood on your knuckles. But you'll be dead for all that. You've been killed inside, Jamie. Maeve! Maeve, darling, this was to be my dance. Travis Bunn! It was Jamie McRuin who came from Ireland. Oh, from Ireland. Is he is he to be a traveller with us? Aye, Mr. Bunn. But not the kind you think. It was the w first of three wishes granted me. A long time ago when I believed in wishes. Jamie, lad, don't go near her tent. Now it's late. Come on, let's leave now. No, Tavish, I've got to see her. Jamie, Jamie, come along. Maeve, me heart's love. Tis I, Jamie, the lost, come to beg your forgiveness for loving you. I wouldn't be causing you a minute's unhappiness, but I couldn't help myself. To said the heart has ears that hear our words before they pass the lips. Then maybe in your sleep, you'll be hearing what I'm saying and know that it's all the truth. I'm going away now, but I couldn't without saying goodbye. Jamie, what are you doing here outside? Is it in your mind to destroy us both? Ah, no, me darling. Only myself, or that part of me that's left after roaming the woods half the night. Ah, you'll have forgotten me by the next turn of the road. Does a man forget the woman that bore him? I was born again this day when I saw you and claimed you for me own. Is this the way you shame your father in his own camp, Maeve Harrigan? And the man you're going to marry to? Not's been said or done to bring shame to anyone, Travis Bunn. Jamie, please. He meant no harm, Travis. Is it a crime to fall in love with Maeve? Oh, in love with Maeve, are you, Macroon? All right, then. Come on away from these tents. We'll settle this by ourselves. I'll not go with you. And not out of cards, either. I could whip you any time I care to. But I'll not raise my hands to you. All right, then, if you won't. <gasps> Jamie! In God's name, defend yourself! From what? from this spell pain who has pillows for fists. Ah! Oh, sure, the ground is thumping me from one side and buns hammering me from the other. Is that a fair fight now? Say you've had enough, Macaroon. Say it, go Say on. Say it, Jamie, and he'll stop. Please, Jamie, please. Oh, sure, now his fists are weak, but he slays armies with his tongue. <laughs> Does it hurt so terribly, Jamie? Only where I'm flesh and blood, Maeve. Would you be lifting one corner of us, an eyelid, so that I might catch a glimpse of your dear face? Lie still, Jamie. Not so long ago, the fairy queen Una granted me three wishes. Travel enough to make a man homesick. I'm sure I've had that already. The woman of me choice. And when I lost you, Maeve, then I lost everything. The belief in my three wishes... And the belief in the magic of my dreams. What was the third wish? A son. One who'd speak in the ancient tongue. What a strange wish. Aye, strange, but wonderful too. Jamie, why didn't you fight Travis back? Lay hands on him you were going to marry. 
Sure, I'd sooner kill a robin, and a robin's a sacred bird. Kill one, and it raises a lump in a man's hand so he can never work again. There may be no lumps in your hand, but sure, Travis Bunn has raised them in every part of you. Ah, I'd like to keep them always, for your two hands have blessed them with a touch. Ah, there'll be others, I'm thinking. This is your say to be getting more and better ones. Aye, but you'll not be there to heal them. Oh, maybe I will. What might that mean? Your maybe? The same as a woman's maybe, anyway. Oh, would it be? Oh, mightn't I just speak with your father? I don't. Father will do all the speaking, and to me. All the bitter words in the world. And a few new ones invented for the occasion. Then, when my kinsman's tongues are tired and all the unkind words been said, and a bucket of tears spilled, and me banished from the camp, and brought back, and banished again, and then? Why, then I'll marry with Jamie McLuhan. Ah, uh, sure now, and I'm dreaming again. Dreaming. <laughs> Two years had passed since Jamie and Maeve had been married, and during that time, Jamie, in partnership with Cousin Tavish, had prospered as a horse trader beyond belief. Yet with all his affluence, Jamie felt forlorn. God had not seen fit to bless him with a son, the son who was to speak in the poetry of the ancient tongue. And Maeve felt Jamie's disappointment very keenly, so this day she planned a surprise for him, an adopted son, seven years of age. Jamie! Remember how we spoke of finding a little boy to adopt? Uh, it was mentioned once or twice in passing. Well, Father Kerrigan has found this one. Here he is. Isn't he a love? I believe I'll stroll down to the corral and have a look at Big Red, my prize mule. <laughs> Jamie, the christening's about to begin. Tavish is to be godfather and wants the boy named Kevin Rowe Tavish McRuin. Do you like it? You mean he's not been baptized, that he has no name? Well, of course he has a name, but not a given one. His father wanted all of his son's names to begin with the same letter. He had six, and when this one came along, well, he had run out of names. So we called him number seven. Well, where's his family now? Somewhere in the backwoods. His mother, Mrs. Prouty, is very poor, and um, Mr. Prouty, her husband, deserted her when Kevin was a babe in arms. And Father Kerrigan wished him upon us as a gift, I suppose. Oh, no, he was not a gift. I gave... I gave Big Red in exchange for the child. You... You, you gave me prize mule in exchange for a, for, for a Malrock with no name? Well, I, I, I don't believe it. You couldn't. I could and I did. Do you think I'd offer any but the best for a child? It would be a sin. But that mule was me right eye. My red, me king of mules. Consider it was an offering for the good of your soul and the forgiveness of your sins. What sins? Oh, stop your eagle screaming. Can't you see you're frightening the child? No. Come along and stand up for the child as a real father should. Well, I've not said I would. Oh, please. You'll not say no to me in this. The little one has set up housekeeping in my heart. Say yes. And we'll live the richer for it all the rest of our days. Ah, sure, you've built such a nest in my ear. Who'd refuse you anything? And you over there. What have you got to say, Ninon? You haven't made a sound. Jamie, there's something else you must know. Now, at once. What is it? From the look on your face, is the day of judgment. The little one, the child, has no power of speaking. In that dreadful home, somewhere along the way, he lost it. Or was born without. Oh, no, no. Not a dummy. I didn't know until he came here. And he was so forlorn. Jamie. Don't you see how much more he needs us now? A dummy! A dummy! Jamie, stop it! Stop it! He has a third wish for you, Jamie McRowan. Me wonderful son, a dummy! Oh, Maeve, I can't do it. I'm going away from here. There now. There now, Kevin Enon. Be comforted. Old Tavish is coming. There now. No crying, mind you, no crying. I know why you ran away and hid here in the deep woods. 
And I know what's been tearing your poor little heart for the last two weeks. Jamie's left Maeve and you think you're to blame. Well, no, I have the answer. I have plenty of money and the two of us are going back to Ireland. Now you like that, don't you? Ah, we'll walk the lanes in the summer and I'll show you the fairy mounds where the little people live. And speaking of walking, we'll be needing a good walking stick. It would never do to go home to Ireland without proper sticks. You know, a man is known there by the walking stick he carries. And now look, lad, let's climb up here to this tree. There's a limb that'll make a perfect walking stick. Mate, I'll climb up. And look, lad, you'll not mind my taking you away from Maeve and leaving the others, will you? Maybe it's selfish of me to take you away, but I think it's for the best. Well, now, here's the limb. <laughs> Oh, dear. I'm that badly hurt, I can't move a leg. Kevin, you'll have to go for help. Now, I wouldn't be sending a little boy like you into the dark woods without a special prayer to protect you. Now, come closer. Come closer, son, and listen to me. Now, this is such a wonderful prayer that anybody using it will never feel fear again, not so long as he lives. It is the cry of the deer. It was invoked by St. Patrick on his way to Tara, bringing Christianity to the pagan Irish. Now listen to me, Kevin. If you repeat this in your mind after me, should any danger threaten you, in a twinkling, you'll be changed into a great stag with flashing antlers and hooves as sharp as sabers. Well, now, come close here. Come close while I say the prayer. I place all heaven within its power and the sun with its brightness and the snow with its whiteness, and the fire with all the strength it hath, and the winds with the swiftness along their path, and the sea with its deepness, and the rocks with their steepness, and the earth with its starkness. All these I place by God's almighty help and grace between Kevin McRuin and the powers of darkness. How are you, Maeve? I... I came in the back way to camp. I didn't want the others to see me like this. About Tavish, I only heard this morning. Oh, if only I'd known. There was nothing you could do. His back was broke. Did he... Did he say anything? He was conscious up to the very last. He blessed us all and spoke a while in Gaelic to Kevin. He'd made a will giving his money to the boy. And then he said Goodbye. Towards the end, he asked that a corner of the tent be raised to make it easier for his soul to pass. Then he asked us to leave him. We waited outside and sang Eileen a room. When inside he talked of mighty Huhulun, great Khan, Neil, and Chiedra of all the souls. And then at last his words drifted away into silence. And he went. God put us find an end on all of us. He was one of the rare ones, was Tavish. He could be a child with children and a man with men. Oh, Maeve. Maeveen, what happened to me? Where did I lose my way? For sure as the stars are fixed, I'm that lost now. I stumbled and fell once, and when I rose up, the world around me was strange. Now I'm all alone. I know it's not in your heart to forgive me, but it wasn't just the taking of someone else's child or his lacking the power of speech. It was the final admission that you and I would never have a child of our own, that another child would be standing where yours and mine should stand, asking for and taking the love we'd stored away for one of our own. Oh, darling, I can't do it. The injustice of it chokes me. Help me before it's too late. If only I could, Jamie. But there be things a man must do all on his own. I think it has to do with growing up. A being 
what you just said about Tavish. A child with children and a man with men. You'll have to grow up, my husband. Maeve, Maeve. Oh, Jamie, thank God you're here. The sheriff's here with a Mr. Proddy who claims to be Kevin's father. He's, he's come to take him away. What do you say? Take Kevin? I'm sheriff. Which one of you is Jamie McRuin? I am. You better come along. The seven boys in Shack camp, and they all line up outside this tent. Jess Proddy's going to pick his out. Well, I guess a man has his right, Sheriff. Jamie! But not when he hasn't seen the boy since he was born. Why did he suddenly come here? A fellow by the name of Travis Bunn told him the child inherited a bunch of money. Oh, so that's the reason. Well, Proddy's trash, but the law says if he wants his son, he can have him. Let's go outside. Oh, Jamie. If the boy leaves the camp, he's lost to us. He's lost. Come on now. Which one of you kids is number seven? Maeve. He doesn't remember his own child. He doesn't know Kevin. Proddy, it is not for myself I'm asking it, nor for Maeve. It is for the little one. He is only beginning to find a little kindness in the world. I want what's mine, mister, and I aim to get it. All right, Proddy. Go on and select your boy, if you can. I ain't worried. Number seven can't talk. All I gotta do is ask each of these here seven kids the names, and the one can't answer, that'll be him. Jamie. Oh, Jamie. What's your name, son? Shirley Boy Donut. Yours? Little Patsy. And Michael Dennis. And you? Francis Stephen Devlin. My name is Tom Donner. There's uh, just two of you left. What's your name? Debbie McLean. That only leaves you, number seven. You know you can't talk. Kevin. Kevin. You see? Number seven can't talk. His mission, Kevin, Tavish, Makroon, Akasjesha, Mawaya. Kevin. Kevin, me boy. My son. That kid talk, Proddy. Let's get out of here. Stop bothering decent people. Well, I, I don't understand it. By all rights, that last kid should have been number seven. Come on, Proddy. Don't let me arrest you for trespassing. Oh, Jim. Jamie, it's a miracle. Ay, me, darling. A miracle. Did you hear what he said? In the ancient tongue he spoke. My name is Kevin Tavish McRoon, and this is me home. Do you realize what that means? Why, it is the other wish. The third wish of Jamie McRoon. And come to him without the lifting of a finger. <laughs> Wichita, your performance has brought back so many happy memories of the times I myself spent in Ireland, and I'd like to thank you for that, as well as for your grand portrayal of Jamie McGruin tonight. No wonder your performance in The Hasty Heart has won you a nomination for this year's Academy Award. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hilton, and thanks to Lorene Tuttle for being such an enchanting maid. You have just heard a special program to celebrate the Feast of St. Patrick, entitled The Three Wishes of Jamie McGruin. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.